welcome everyone so till now we have covered what is multi-threading how to create threads in functional and non-functional way and also how we can return something from a thread execution in case you have missed any of those topics you can check out the playlist from top right corner of your screen now let's talk about today's agenda in the previous video i have presented two scenarios in the end one where we need to see how to pause the execution of currently running thread and second was to control the execution sequence up to some extent i hope you might have already tried it on your own still if it is pending we will take care of one of those scenarios in today's session now without any further delay let's start Suppose we need to pause the execution of currently running thread, then how we can achieve it? So here we will discuss three different ways to pause the execution of currently running thread. And in the end, we'll also see why do we have three ways just to pause the execution. First and most basic one is using sleep function of thread class that we have already been using in our previous example thread.sleep. Using this, we can specify the number of milliseconds for which we want to pause the currently running thread. Now let's take a very simple example where I will make the main thread sleep for 5 seconds and then continue its execution. If we see in Java, everything is based on threads. Unknowingly, we all have been using threads. When we wrote our first Hello World program, what exactly we did in that time? We wrote a class and a main method where our hello statement was written. And when we execute the program, it gets executed in a thread called main. So here we are pausing that main thread execution in this example. First, a print statement on the start of the main thread execution with the current date and time then a call to a method pause execution which will pause the current thread to make the pausing more customizable we are passing the pause time as an argument to this particular method so that the caller to this function can pass their desired value and not some hard coded value also, it makes the code of the caller more readable as everything related to sleeping is taken care by the pause execution method separately. In the pause execution method, first we are printing the name of the thread which is getting paused and after that a call to sleep method of thread class with the delay time which was passed by the caller. That delay time will be in the form of milliseconds. And in the end, when pause execution is complete, we are printing that the main thread is now resuming its execution. Now let's try to run this and observe the output. So here you can see main thread starts its execution and the time is also printed which is 43 seconds at the start time and then pausing the execution of main thread is printed. So it has printed which thread it is actually uh, pausing in the thread.sleep call and after that the resume statement is printed. So if you can see there is exactly 5 seconds of difference between uh, the main thread starts and the main thread resume statement. So that shows us that the main thread was paused for exactly 5000 milliseconds or we can say 5 seconds. So that was one of the way to pause the execution of any thread. There is another way to pause the execution of threads that is using wait method. So wait method is actually used for inter-thread communication. 
it pauses the current thread until another thread notifies it to wake up. So as you can see in our previous example, we are only dealing with a single thread. But using wait and notify to pause and resume the thread execution, we will need at least two threads. One method which was earlier executing can call this wait method to pause its execution and during that it will release the resources as well so that the other threads can use them. And once the other thread notify back that it is done with its processing then first thread can again resume its processing and acquire the lock also. Now let us see that with an example so that it might be more clear. I will be using functional programming while writing the implementation of those two threads. So if you are not familiar with then I recommend you to watch the video from top right corner of your screen before continuing. And also we will be using one more concept of synchronization in this particular example. So I will not go in detail in synchronization in this video because we will have a separate video on the synchronization part itself. But let's try to understand basically what synchronization means. So suppose there are multiple threads and you have some shared resources between them and you do not want multiple threads to uh, execute or use those resources at the same time. So to control that particular uh, resource usage so that one thread can use it at a time, we can use synchronization. And that can be done using synchronized keyword. So it can be applied to a method or to a block of code as well. Now let's go ahead with the coding and then we will have the code walkthrough. So this is the code for second way of uh, pausing the thread execution which is currently running. So this is using wait method of object. So the wait method is defined inside the object class. So here suppose uh, this is one of the object let's say or oh, both the threads wants to use this particular resource so name it as resource. So this is shared between those two threads and now let's see the implementation of those two threads. So in the first thread which is T1 so we have used synchronized resource that means we have synchronized the usage of this resource itself so that only a single thread will be able to access uh, or acquire a lock on this particular resource. So once uh, thread one is started its execution and entered inside this synchronized block then thread two have to wait until uh, thread one releases the lock on this particular resource. And what we are doing inside uh, this synchronized block first we are printing that thread one is running and after that we are printing that thread one is uh, getting paused by calling the 
wait method so so what will happen during the wait method call the thread t1 will release this particular resource lock so that other threads can acquire the lock on this particular resource and it will keep on waiting for a particular signal that signal will be sent by the other uh, threads who will be using this particular resource that we will see in the thread to implementation so it will keep on waiting uh, at this point so once it receives a signal that yes now i can continue then it will print that thread one resuming after receiving the notify signal here and if you see we have included it inside a try catch block because uh, it can um, throw the interrupted exception as well so that we are also logging in the console now let's see the implementation of other thread itself and it is also synchronizing the same resource so once resource dot wait this particular line is executed for thread one then thread two will be able to enter inside this particular block because at that point this resource will be free to acquire the lock so then after that it will print thread two is running then to imitate a sort of processing we are uh, making this thread to sleep for around three seconds and after that uh, we are printing that uh, processing for this thread is complete now we are notifying thread one to wake up because thread one is currently uh, we can say in the sleeping state or in the waiting state so that a signal can come and it can start or resume its execution so using resource dot notify it will tell all the threads in the thread pool that this resource is now available to use because it is this particular statement will uh, release the lock on this particular resource as well so once that is done this thread will be waiting for that particular signal and as soon as it receives then it will start its remaining execution as well so in the end resuming after receiving notify will be printed and these two were the implementations and in the end we are starting both the threads using dot start call now let's execute this program and observe the output as well so here you can see at first thread one is running then thread one got paused by calling the wait method call and after that you can see thread two started running the resume of thread one did not run because it was waiting for other thread to notify it. So once thread two is started running, it executed for three mil, uh, three seconds or three thousand milliseconds, and after that it has notified the thread one that now you can wake up. And after receiving that notify signal, then we can see thread one resumed its execution and all the remaining statements were executed so this particular way is not only to uh, have the thread execution uh, pause but it actually acts as a communication between different threads so that the inter-thread communication can happen so that can be achieved using dot wait and dot notify and dot notify all method calls which all of these three are present in object class now there is one more way to pause the execution of currently running thread which is using yield method call but this is not a hundred percent sure solution to pause the execution like in case of thread dot sleep we are sure that the thread execution will be paused and in case of wait as well we are hundred percent sure that thread execution will pause but in case of using yield we are not sure whether um, it will actually pause the execution of currently running thread or not this method only suggests the jvm that current thread is willing to yield its current execution to give other threads a chance to run so this is useful when there is a situation of starvation and other threads are not getting appropriate cpu so the currently running threads they can yield so during that yield it will uh, release the cpu so that other threads can also make use of the cpu for their execution now let us code that as well and see how it works
so here in this implementation i have again two threads so in the first thread itself uh, we are running a for loop and uh, for every iteration we are printing that uh, the thread one is executing and printing the iteration number and after that as well we are also trying to yield it so that if any thread is starving for the cpu uh, the jvm can decide whether it can take up the cpu and give it to the other threads as well and the similar thing we are doing for the uh, second t2 thread as well so here we are printing thread 2 is executing with the iteration number and again yielding it now there is no surety that uh, it will actually yield or uh, relinquish the cpu and give it to the other thread but the output will be unpredictable every time so that is why i was saying this is not the 100 percent sure solution for pausing the execution of any currently running thread this will only suggest the jvm now let's uh, run it two three times and see how the output is uh, different So here you can see uh, thread 2 starts as execution first then thread 1 then two iterations of thread 2 and again thread 1 so it is little unpredictable if I run it again I will get a totally different output as well let me run it once again so here you can see this time thread 1 thread 2 thread 1 thread 2 so couple of times alternative and then uh, a couple of iterations together for thread 1 and thread 2 as well so you can see it is uh, completely unpredictable now we have seen like how we can pause the currently executing thread in three different ways so the question is why do we have three different ways to do the same thing to understand that we need to compare these methods on the basis of two metrics first one is lock on the resources and second one is whether or not thread will release the cpu for other threads to execute now let's see what will happen in case of thread.sleep so during thread.sleep it will release the cpu so that the other threads can run during this particular time and make use of cpu as well but if the current thread is holding any particular lock to any of the resources then that lock will not be released that means other thread cannot acquire the lock on that particular resource uh, on which a sleeping thread is having a lock in case of object.wait method it will also release the cpu just like uh, thread.sleep so that the other threads can run during this time but compared to sleep method it will also release lock on the resources as well that we have just seen in our second example where we were having a lock using synchronized block on the resource object and after calling dot wait method it releases that lock and the other thread was able to acquire that particular lock the waiting thread can acquire the lock back when it is awakened by a notify or notify call from the other thread that happened during the execution of second thread last one was thread dot yields so that behavior is little different here unlike the other two ways there is no guarantee that your current thread will pause the execution it can just suggest the thread scheduler that it is ready to pause the execution and in case any threads which are waiting for the cpu time and the cpu time can be allocated to those threads thus we can say it will partially release the cpu it can release or it cannot release also and as far as the lock is concerned on the resource it does not release any lock during the yield call itself the thread continues to hold the lock it it acquires before calling the yield method so based on your specific requirement you can use any of these methods which satisfy your use cases i hope this session was useful to you if so you can give us a like and share this video with someone who is willing and ready to learn multi-threading in depth in case of any doubt or suggestion please let me know in the comment section as your feedback means a lot thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next video with second scenario implementation. Till then, keep learning.